welcome back to the arcade. Today we're still working on the Star Trek Next Generation pinball machine. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of cosmetic work. Um, when I got this game, the uh, side rail here had a right nasty bend in it. And if you can see, it's uh, bent in a little bit. And the hinge on this side of the, the game has a slight bow in it. Now, what they did to cause this damage, I have no idea. It doesn't appear to really have a whole lot of other damage on this side other than eh, it's a little bit of wood uh, chipped on the back of the back box here and a little bit on the back edge of the cabinet. So, But other than that, uh, it doesn't appear to be any major damage. So I don't know what would have caused that hinge to be bent that bad and uh, I guess it's possible that the the back could have been down uh, in in like moving position and maybe something hit and pushed this sideways but it doesn't appear that it bent the hinge on the other side uh, I mean that that looks straight uh, but anyway, I bought a, a pair of uh, hinges, so if I need to, I, I can change that one too. So I have a new set of hinges, and also in this long box here, I have two new side rails. So that's what we're going to do today. I've never uh, had side rails off of one, so this is going to be a new experience for me. Uh, it appears that it has a bolt here, a uh, carriage bolt and I can see the nut on this side right here. So I know it's attached on this end with a bolt and I'm pretty sure it's attached up on this other end too probably with a bolt but it's hidden by the hinge. So uh, we're either going to have to let the back box down or just go ahead and take the hinge loose and we'll probably be able to gain access to that too and then we'll have to figure out where that nut is if it is indeed a nut, it may just be screwed into the wood on the back side. But we'll find out. Also, uh, I found out that this has some uh, double-sided tape that, that holds it down. And I'm suspecting that the double-sided tape is on this top edge. I don't know that for a fact because I haven't ever taken one apart. But I would think that if it was on, on this edge to hold it to the side of the cabinet that it would be more of a lip and it, it appears to be uh, pretty tight against the cabinet there. So uh, we'll go ahead and start taking some things apart and we'll find out. Okay to get started we're going to have to remove the hinge and the hinge uses a, a standard quarter inch uh, Allen wrench and we had to raise up the play field so it would drop down so we could get easy access to this uh, nut. It, it has a uh, like a carriage bolt head on the outside of the hinge but on the inside it has a special nut uh, which acts as uh, the, the hinge point. So what we need to do is loosen this up. Okay, well, we have the uh, bolt out, so we might as well just go ahead and leave that in for the time being because it, it doesn't uh, affect the hinge. So now what we have to do is take our speaker DMD panel off because we have to have access to 
the three bolts that hold the the hinge, the other half of the hinge onto the bottom of the back box. So now we'll just get uh, a socket and go ahead and, and take those off. Okay, these nuts are standard 7 16 and they're also carriage bolt uh, bolts and they're loose already. Three are loose and I noticed one on the other side is missing completely so evidently somebody has probably had this loose at one time or another. out and as you can see they're just regular carriage bolts the last one coming out our hinge comes off and as you can see that hinge is definitely bent and been rubbing uh, when the, the box is closed up so we have a brand new one for that And the hinges do have a right and left side, and you can see the difference here between the new one and the old one. See how the old one is bent. Probably could have took and straightened it back up, but uh, then I would have had to sand it down and and repaint it. And and this is uh, powder coated. I'm pretty sure. So. Uh, I figured for the price, i just go ahead and get two new ones and I'll swap out the one on the other side too. Now that we have our hinge off, we'll go ahead and we'll put our speaker panel back up in place just to get it out of the way. Because now we need to take this rail off. And according to this over here, it doesn't look like it even has a bolt here. Uh, I'll bring the camera over here and, and let you see. I don't know whether it's supposed to have one. And uh, it doesn't look like it ever had, but we'll see. Alright, well now that we have the hinge off, you can see where the hinge has been gouging in, into the cabinet when it's been raised and lowered. So that would mean that uh, this hinge has been bent for quite some time. Um, and you can see the bend in the rail here and you can actually see that the bend in the rail is causing this to be uh, not tied up against the cabinet like it's supposed to be and it doesn't look like it's ever had a, a bolt in this end right here um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't so probably it doesn't get one I guess it only gets one in this end right here and then the uh, double-sided tape which I, I have right here I guess holds it on to the, the side of the cabinet uh, evidently this goes on this wide flat side but once I pull this off I'll find out for sure so next let us go ahead and take this carriage bolt out here and then we'll see how easy it's going to be to get this side rail off. All right, turns out this nut is an 11 32nd. So we'll put a wrench on it here. And go ahead and take it loose.
washer on it, but it's stuck to the wood. So I'll take and prise that off so I don't lose it. But uh, now that's loose, so all we have to do now is figure out the best way to uh, get this unstuck from the side of the cabinet without damaging the cabinet art. Um, maybe taking some heat to it, a little a hair dryer or something, uh, or maybe putting a putty knife under the edge of it and prizing up with a putty knife. Uh, we'll uh, see what the best way is to do that. Okay, we're going to attempt to remove this side rail. Uh, we've already removed the uh, bolt on the end here, and it didn't have a nail or a bolt on this end. This already had a bend in it right here, so it was already sticking out from the cabinet. So the only thing holding it on is that double-sided sticky tape, and uh, but that's supposed to be some real tough stuff. So what I'm going to try to attempt here to take these two bars so I can get up underneath here. I'm going to prise out on this. Put this one in. Prise out on it. Shorten it up a little bit here. And try to work my way down. And see if I can't And of course I'm not concerned about the side rail because I'm not going to use it. Uh, I have a new, new rail I'm going to put on it. So all I'm concerned about is getting it off without messing the cabinet up. Kind of here, the tape when it when it pulls loose. I'm sort of pulling this track out with it. Just sort of taking it real easy here. And I can feel it coming loose. And there we have it. And they look like they use a black uh, double-sided tape. The stuff that uh, I got is white, but it is a, a foam, so it, it should work pretty good. So now all we have to do is clean this tape residue off. and then we'll be ready to uh, install the new piece on. Okay, well I was going to use some Nap Napster to uh, remove this, uh, 
but then I realized you no know, I'm in here right beside a gas hot water heater so can't use that because too many uh, fumes and don't want an explosion and I didn't have any goo gone so I just said well it might take a little longer I'll just use some good old old-fashioned Windex so we just take a towel and spray a little Windex on it let it soak a little bit and then a little bit of muscle power and the old glue will just sort of roll up with the foam and it'll come off on the on the rag so here's a quite a bit of it right here This process may vary depending on what type of double-sided tape was used when they put it on. Uh, I don't know since it's the first one I took off, I don't know if this is factory or whether somebody had replaced these at one point and used something else, but I, I have a sneaky feeling that it's probably factory. I don't know that for sure, but it did stick pretty good and was right tough to get off once it once it was stuck on especially since it's been on there for all these years but it's not too bad Matter of fact, that's pretty much it right there. And when we're taking it up, we pulled a staple out of our uh, plastic glass track. This is the track that uh, of course your glass slides into and it appears like it's similar to a T-molding. Looks like it has a groove in the center where it goes down in the groove and, and then they have staples that they, they put on it. So we're going to make sure we got to uh, drive this staple back in. And then We'll figure out what the next step is and uh, how we're going to reattach this thing. Uh, these places, little chips in the wood there that, are, that I put in there, they're not going to affect it because that's going to be totally hidden with the new side rail. So uh, you won't even know that's there. So uh, I think that turned out pretty good. So let's go ahead and figure out the next step. Okay, now we're going to get the rail prepared to to be installed we have this double-sided foam tape and what we have to do is put it on the inside of, of the uh, the wide side which is the side that goes on the side of the cabinet and looking at the the old one here as you can see uh, it's not quite in the middle it's a little more towards the bottom than the top and they have it cut on an angle right here. The tape doesn't go all the way out to the end. And it's the same way on both ends. It's cut on an angle uh, on both ends. So I guess we can sort of duplicate that. And uh, so what we'll do 
is we'll start our tape here and take a pair of scissors. Just cut a little angle on it. Then we'll try to line it up here about the same way that they, they did originally. Now we want to get this on straight. So the best way to do it would be to just pull a little bit out like this put the roll right where you want it and then you just take and push it down that way you know you have it lined up if you get it a little off kilter then uh, even though this is a, kind of a wide piece of tape you still want to keep it fairly straight if you can so you don't have any kinks in it. But it is foam so it, it will if you get it a little bit off you can always get it to go back in the other position. should do it. Now all we have to do is uh, go over to the game, put it on, and figure out exactly the best way to put this on without getting it to stick in a, in a wrong position. Okay, well we've done a test fit. Uh, I put the, uh, the carriage bolt in that goes in this end here that lines it up and it seems to fit real nice on here. Now what we're going to have to do is figure out the best way to get this on and down in place without the uh, sticky back tape sticking in the wrong position. So um, that's going to be the trick. So I think what I'm going to try Being. I put a, a little piece on the end here since there's nothing uh, holding it on this end. I guess I could put a, a nail in it or a screw, but it's under that hinge and it would have to be flat. So I'm, I'm not going to put anything there. I just put a little piece of tape there and I'll pull that off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and peel the tape off a little bit on this end and fold it down. That way it'll be sticking out the bottom. Okay, and this is what I'm going to try. I'll put the carriage bolt in. Get it started. out so it doesn't stick until I get it down on there. Now it's down on there so now I'm going to stick this end right here. I should hold that. The carriage bolt is in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and pull this and 
hopefully it won't tear and rip. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it off to full length. And it did what I didn't want it to do. It did rip. Okay, I have to see if I can't prize this piece out a little bit. Got all of it. I know better than to try that again. Okay. Now all we need to do is just press this edge on. Make sure we get a good seal on the tape. Should do it. I'll put a nut on. Well, before I do that, I'm going to have to pull this protective white plastic off. So we'll take that off. If we go ahead and peel this protective plastic off. ahead and put a carriage bolt in and put our nut on and you don't want to tighten this down too tight just snug it up because we don't want to pull it into the wood and cause a, a bend here We want it snug enough to where it's not going to come loose. All right, and there we have it. This side rail is now on. It looks good. Um, didn't go exactly according to plan, but it worked out. So, as you can see, it's not a perfect science uh, until you've done a, a few of these. You're going to have problems, but. Uh, when I do, if I do the other side, of course the other side don't have any bends in it, so I'm going to take a good look at it. I have a new one for it, but if uh, there's no bends in it and it looks good, I may just leave it and, uh, and save it in case I need it in the future. So um, now all we have to do is put the hinge back on and um, 
then we'll be finished. Okay, now we're going to put our new hinge back on. And we'll start out by putting the, the carriage bolt back in the outer side of the hinge. And we'll put it through the, the hole here. And we'll take our Allen wrench. in this uh, special nut here which is also the hinge <laughs> goes all the way through so if you put your wrench in too far you won't be able to start the threads I just found that out so make sure you don't have your wrench in there too far and we're not going to tighten that up yet just snug, snug it up now we have to take our speaker panel back down because we have access to our three bolts back here in this back panel. these are going to line up. And yes, lines up without a whole lot of problem. I was worried that it might not line up real good because this hinge was bent. But it seems like uh, it's pretty much in the place it should be. So that's good. up. Now it's the one in the middle. And get my wrench and the socket. socket back in the hole here so I don't remember what size it was.
this snugged up and tight. Speaker panel back in. Now we can go ahead and finish tightening up this hinge nut. Okay, well looking at this other rail, there's no bends in it and it looks to be in good shape. Uh, there's no bends in the other hinge. That's good and straight so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it like it is and I'll just save the other hinge and, and rail uh, in case I get another one of these wide body pins and might need it in the future. So let's go ahead and put the trans light back in and let's play some Star Trek. Okay, well we got it back up and running again. Uh, if you notice, my Borg ship plastic is missing. That's because I took it off when I was cleaning the play field and re replacing the, the rubbers. I uh, also replaced, and I think I got a bulb out there. Yep, always something. But anyway, I re replaced these lane guards and new rubbers and gave it a good cleaning and everything. And I haven't put the Borg ship back on yet because I'm trying to debate whether or not to put a LED kit in it. And I'm lucky because my, my Borg ship plastic uh, doesn't have any heat damage. It's, it's a little dirty, needs to be cleaned up some. But uh, the only problem it does have is with the uh, blue plastic gel. As you can see, it's uh, sort of turned up and and rolling up and you can actually when the when the lights flash you can actually see uh, the places where the uh, gel is not covering the windows so I'm thinking about getting one of those uh, plastic kits the, uh, they make a blue and a green but since this particular ship is in the original series um, it's more blue than green, where most Borg stuff is green. I'm going to leave it blue. So uh, that's just one thing I'm going to do. But right now I'm just going to leave this off till I decide. So let's go ahead and, and play a little bit of the, the game and see how it's playing. Enterprise, the board has entered Federal Space. Here is Admiral Biagi out. Course rate right out. 